Today we're going to be doing the marriage service, the Eastern Orthodox marriage service, uh, specifically uh, according to the typicon of the Greek Orthodox Church, that is to say, according to the typicon of the George Violakis typicon. Um, this practice is pretty much done by those uh, churches around the Mediterranean Sea, that is to say, uh, the Greeks and the Antiochians. Um, just so we can look at the preparations needed for the service. Oh, by the way, I want to say one thing. Uh, we're very blessed to be filming today at um, Hellenic College Holy Cross Chapel of the Holy Cross in Brookline. Uh, we weren't able to be previously, but now we are, and I think it's a great blessing. It's a beautiful church. Uh, in fact, it's a copy of an 11th century church dedicated to the Holy Apostles, uh, which is found to this day at the foothills of the Acropolis. So let us look at the preparations that need it. Um, this is a table. You're going to need a table to do the marriage service. And on the table, you're going to have the gospel. On the gospel, you're going to have the crowns. You're also going to have the rings needed for the first part of the marriage service. And then you also will have a cup with some wine. I just want to mention the fact that the vestments you're going to need to wear would be the Petrahili and the Felonion because this is what we wear in all sacraments. All sacraments at one point in the early church were done in the context of the divine liturgy and the marriage service also was done in the context of the divine liturgy and therefore back then obviously uh, the priest would have been fully vested and so the remnant of that today is the fact that when we do sacraments we at least wear the Thelonion and the Petrahili or the stall. And I just want to um, bring your attention to the, the gate and the fact that it has a purple uh, curtain. That would not normally be the case. It happens to be, during, it happens to be great Lent now that I'm filming this. Uh, marriage services normally would not be uh, celebrated during great Lent. And even outside of great Lent, marriage services are typically celebrated either ma mainly on a Sunday but sometimes on Saturdays also. So Saturdays and Sundays are full liturgical days, and this um, harkens back to the fact that uh, marriage services in the ancient church were done in the context of the divine liturgy. Similar to the baptismal service, which has two parts, the marriage service also has two parts. The first part is called the um, betrothal, and the second part is the sacrament proper, as it were, and that is the so-called crowning. In, in the Greek Orthodox Church. So we're going to begin with the um, betrothal, the first part. I'll show you the way we do it in Greece. Um, the tradition in Greece is to take the couple, meet the couple at the door of the church, and um, bring them in as you chant Axion Esteem. You're probably never going to do this here in the United States, but I'm showing this to you just for the sake of um, information and because it's in the context of our teleturgics class for HCHC, Holy Cross Greek Orthodox uh, Church uh, Seminary. Okay, let us begin. <laughs> And now the anarchies for the betrothal part of the service. Besides the standard petitions of the Great Litany or the Litany of Peace, there also will be extra ones added on in this service referring to the couple. And therefore, if you're going to do it in Greek, you need to know the grammar, you need how to use the grammar uh, properly. Υπέρτου δούλου του Θεού Δημητρίου και της δούλης του Θεού Μαρίας 
τον νυν νυστευωμένον αλλήλης και τη σωτηρίας αυτών του Κυρίου Δεϊθόμεν. In English, for the servant of God Dimitrios and the servant of God Maria, who now pledge themselves to one another, and for their salvation let us pray to the Lord. Then we skip over to the end. Is Panagia Sarkandri Perevlogimenis, and so on and so forth. Ότι πρέπει σε πάσα δόξα τιμή και πρόσκυνη στο Πατρί και το Αιώ και το Αιώ Πνεύμα την Ινκιά ή και Ιησούς Ιωάννος των Αιώνων. And the rest of the service is very self-explanatory. You just pretty much go through it, but I will show you some specific liturgical actions that you need to be aware of. So, we start with the first prayer. The prayer, this service is made up of two shorter prayers and one long prayer. Now we will begin with the short prayer. Του Κυρίου Λεϊφόμεν, ο Θεός ο αιώνιος, ότα διερημένα συναγαγώνεις ενότητα και σύνδεσμον διαθέσεως και της άρρηκτων, που ευλογήσας Ισαάκ και Ρεβέκαν και κληρονόμους αυτούς της εσείς επαγγελίας αναδείξας, αυτός ευλόγησον και τους δούλους σου τούτους, οδηγών αυτούς εν παντή έργο αγαθό. Or in English, O God eternal, who has brought together into unity the things which before had been separate, and so on and so forth. What the elei mon ke filamro bos deos ipar kis ke siti dogs and ana pelo mento patri ke to yo ke to yo temo tini ki ai ke isu si ona stone ono. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord our God, who espoused the church as a pure virgin called out of the Gentiles, bless this betrothal, and you bless the rings that are on top of the gospel. Bless this betrothal, uniting these your servants, keeping them in peace and oneness of mind. For to you are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever and unto the ages of ages. And you come here in front of the table, and you bless the rings that should be on the gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Say Amen. 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 Αγωνίστε ο δούλος του Θεού, Δημήτριος, την δούλη του Θεού, Μαρία, στο όνομα του Πατρός και του Ιού και του Ιωγνήματος. The servant of God, Δημήτριος, is betrothed to the servant of God, Μαρία, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Αγωνίστε ο δούλος του Θεού, Δημήτριος, την δούλη του Θεού, Μαρία, in the name of the Father, so it's done three times going from the man to the woman, and then it's going to go three times from the woman to the man. And so if you're going to do it in Greek, you need to worry, you need to be aware of the grammar. In other words, the first person is going to be in the nominative case, and the second person is going to be in the accusative case. So you need to know how to do that if you're going to do it. And it's not going to be modern Greek grammar, but it's going to be Hellenistic or Kini Greek grammar. Now, we'll see what happens when we go from the woman to the man. Αρβονίστε ο δούλος του Θεού Μαρία, τον δούλο του Θεού Δημήτριον, στο όνομα του Πατρός και του Ιού και του Ιούγνωτος. The servant of God, Maria, is betrothed to the servant of God, Δημήτριος, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Αρβονίστε ο δούλος του Θεού Μαρία, τον δούλο του Θεού Δημήτριον, στο όνομα του Πατρός και του Ιού. So, in the Orthodox Church, we wear our rings on the right hand. So what you're going to do is, you're going to put the rings loosely on the ring finger of both of them, of the right hand, and then the kubara is going to come. I'll pretend I'm, I'll pretend I'm a kubara who would normally be sitting in the back. He's going to come up in the front, and he's simply going to do, and again, different, there are different traditions and customs as to how to do this. It's not really, it doesn't really matter that much. It's not a theological issue. But basically what this symbolizes is the mutuality uh, between them. Um, 
So basically what we do is we change the rings three times. And there might be different versions of how to do this. So I'm going to do it very simply like this. One, two, three. And then there's the next prayer, which is a longer prayer, which deals with the, the meaning of rings in uh, the history of salvation, mainly taken from the Old Testament. The rings are a sign of mutuality and faithfulness, specifically the faithfulness of God towards his people and God towards his creation, and by extension, the couple um, with each other. So I'm not going to waste time by reading the whole prayer. It's the prayer that you can find on page 78 of the Holy Cross, Mikron uh, Ephkolohion. O Lord our God, you'd go back up to the um, beautiful gate and you'd say, O Lord our God, who accompanied the servant of the patriarch Abraham to Mesopotamia. I'm going to skip over to the end of this longer prayer that deals with the rings. And most priests at the very end uh, take the last sentence as a sort of uh, vaxological exclamation. Before them all the days of their life, for you are he that blesses and sanctifies all things, and to you do we send up glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever and unto the ages of ages. In Greek, that taxological exclamation is called an ekphonesis. And then we begin the second part of the marriage service, or the marriage service proper, which is the so-called crowning service. This service begins with a series of psalm verses and the chanter uh, answering with a refrain, doxa si o theosimon doxa si. So the psalm verses are taken from Psalm 127, and Psalm 127 is one of the so-called Psalms of degrees. In the Sabaitic tradition of the Psalter, the 18th Kathisma would include the so-called Psalms of degrees. And these are the Psalms 119 to 133. They have a long history because in Israel, before Christ, in the Old Testament times, this, these psalms would be the psalms that Jewish pilgrims would intone and sing as they would ascend the, ro ascend the road from, let's say, Jericho to Jerusalem for uh, uh, a pilgrimage. So these are connected with ascent. Also, the Levites in the Temple of Solomon would also recite these psalms as they would uh, ascend the steps of the Temple of, the, of, the temple of Solomon. Therefore, these psalms are traditionally connected with ascent, and that's why they're read at the beginning of this service, because marriage, the sacrament of marriage, is considered to be an ascent. And another interesting fun fact is the fact that these psalms have also inspired the hymns that we chant in a festival altar called the Anavatmi. Um, on weekdays, but also specifically on Sundays, the Anavatmi are inspired by Psalms 119 to 133, which are the, the Psalms of the 18th Kathisma. Why? Again, it's an ascent, because they are chanted right before a sort of high point in the Orthros, which is the reading of the Gospel in the Festival Orthros. So, let us begin. Makari Fogumini Tontirio So the priest chants the psalm verses, in other words, the priest today fulfills the role of the cantor or the soloist in the cathedral rite, and the chanter fulfills the role of the people. So in the olden days, as we saw also in the case of the Presentified Liturgy, the chanter would chant the psalm verses, and all the people would chime in with the uh, response or the refrain. In today's practice, uh, the priest does the psalm verses and the chanter does the refrain. Makari pande si kofumeni tuan kirion and the chanter. Loksa si o theosi monloksa si that walks in his ways. Glory to you, O our God. Glory to you. Tus pomus tum karpon su fagese and so on and so forth. Many priests oftentimes skip over to the end, or they put all these psalm verses together to have less response, responses or less refrains in order to save some time. 
Que id idis ius tonion su irini epiton Israel doxasi ofeosimon doxasi. Then we begin the actual service with the anarchists. Whereas the anarchists for the betrothal part of the service is evlogitos ofeosum pantenikia ikeisus yonus anon. Blessed is our God always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The anarchist for this part of the service, which is connected with the actual sacrament, is coming from the Divine Liturgy, because as we said, all sacraments were connected, were performed, were celebrated within the context of the Divine Liturgy. So we have the usual Divine Liturgy anarchist, as we find in the beginning of all sacraments. Ευλογημένη Βασιλεία του Πατρός και του Υιού και του Υιού Πνεύματος νύχια η κέσης αιώνας των αιώνων. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit both now and forever unto the ages of ages. And then the priest goes back up to the beautiful gate and begins the great litany again with certain special petitions added on that are slightly different than the petitions that were in the betrothal part of the service. So those first five petitions were the usual petitions of the Litany of Peace or the Great Litany. And then added on are six extra petitions for referring to the specific couple. And then it ends with the last um, two petitions and then the petition to the Panagia at the very end and then the Ekphronistis. So again, if you're going to be doing it in Greek, you need to know the grammar. In this petition, you need to know the genitive case of the names if you're going to do them in Greek. Hyperton Vulon to Theo Dimitriou Ke Marias Ton Min Synapton Menona Lilis Is Gamu Kinonia Kiti Sotirias Afton Kiriu Dei Fomen So in English, for the servants of God, Dimitrios and Maria, who are now being joined to one another in the community of marriage, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord, and so on and so forth. Tis Panagia Sarkan, we can apply many some dogs to spin in Simon Theo, Tobu Kei, and Theo Marias, and so on and so forth. For to you are to all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. And then there are two longer prayers, and the third prayer is a shorter prayer. The third prayer, the shorter prayer, is connected with the actual crowning, and it is one of the original prayers in the marriage service, and it is found in the Barberini Codex. So let us go through these prayers. In order to not waste time, I'm not going to go through all of them. The first prayer is very self-explanatory. You basically read through it. O God, most pure author of all creation, who through your human befriending love transformed a rib of Adam, a forefather, and so on and so forth. So that's the first prayer. And then the second prayer has some specific liturgical actions that you need to know. So, blessed are you, O Lord our God, holy celebrant of mystical and pure marriage, maker of the laws that govern earthly bodies, guardian of incorruption, kindly protector of the means of life. Do you yourself, O Master, who in the beginning created the human being and appointed him as the king of creation and said, it is not good for man to be alone upon the earth. Let us make a helpmate for him. And so on and so forth. And then, taking one of his ribs, made woman whom when Adam saw, he said, now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. For she was taken out of her man. For this cause shall a human being forsake his father and mother and cleave unto his wife the two shall be one flesh. And whom God has joined together, let no human being 
put asunder. And now, O Master, Lord our God, send down your heavenly grace upon these your servants, Demetrius and Maria, and grant unto this woman, and so on and so forth. If it was in Greek, you'd have to know, again, the proper grammar. Despre Kyrio Theosimon, katapepson tin harinsu, tin epuranion epi tus dulusu tutus, ton Dimitrion ketin Marian and so on and so forth. So that's in the accusative case. So in Kini or Hellenistic Greek, we need to put the ni, the n at the end of it. And then it goes on. And now, O Master, Lord our God, send down your heavenly grace upon these your servants, Demetrius and Maria. And then it goes on. That they may live according to your will. Bless them, O Lord our God, as you blessed Abraham and Sarah. Bless them, O Lord our God, as you blessed Isaac and Rebekah. Many priests do this part of the prayer in this way. Bless them, O Lord our God, as you blessed Abraham and Sarah, and they skip right over to, as you blessed Isaac and Rebekah, as you blessed Jacob and the prophets. And there's nothing wrong with this because up to the 15th century, with the invention of the printing press, there was a great deal of variety in the text. And there was a development and an evolution that was pretty much frozen with the development of the, with the invention of the printing press. Although even now we'll find slight variations in different books. So it's a living tradition. And the, for, for 15 centuries before the invention of the printing press, uh, this service and the actual text was developing. Again, always reflecting the same basic theology of marriage. So, moving on. Bless them as you blessed Moses and Zipporah, as you blessed Joachim and Anna, as you blessed Ze Zacharias and Elizabeth. Preserve them. Now, same thing. Preserve them, O Lord our God, as you preserved Noah in the ark, as you preserved Jonah in the jaw of the sea beast as you preserved the holy three children from the fire, when you sent down upon them the dew of the heavens. And may that joy come upon them which the blessed Helen had when she found the precious cross. Remember them, O Lord, our God, as you remember Enoch, Shem, and Elias, as you remember your holy forty martyrs sending down upon them the crowns from the heavens. Remember them, O Lord our God, and the parents who have reared them. For the prayers of parents confirm the foundation of houses. Remember, O Lord our God, the wedding company that here have come together to be present at this rejoicing. Remember, O Lord our God, your servant, Demetrius, and your servant, Maria, and bless them. Or in Greek, Nimonipson, Kyriotheos, so in this case, it's in the genitive case. And then skipping down to the end. And being accepted before you, let them shine as stars in the heavens, in you our Lord, in whom are due all glory, honor, and worship as to your eternal Father and your all-holy good and life creating spirit, both now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Or in Greek, Evarestisandes en opionsu lamsosin os fostires en urano, en si to kirio imon. O prepi palsa doxa kratos timi ke proskinisis, nin ke ai ke esosionas ton shine as stars in the heavens in you our Lord to whom are due all glory honor and worship as to your eternal Father and your all holy good and life creating spirit both now and forever and unto the ages of ages and then we move on to the next prayer the original Barberini Codex prayer of the crown to carry you lay for men let us pray to the Lord. This prayer has some liturgical actions that we need to constitute.
must remark. Holy God, who fashioned the human being from the dust, and from his rib fashioned woman, and joined her to him as a helpmate for him. For it was seemly unto your majesty for a man not to be alone upon the earth. Do you yourself, O sovereign Lord, stretch forth your hand from your holy dwelling place, and then you descend as you say the next words. And join together this your servant, Demetrius, and this your servant, Maria. This is the exaposal of the Hirosu Exaiu, Katikitirius, Garoson, Mulosu, Demetrio, Katikitirisu, Maria, Oti Parasu, Armoste, and Vi Gini. Then you go on. Join them together in oneness of mind, down them. Grant to them the fruit of the womb, and so on and so forth. For yours is the dominion, and yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and the ages of ages. And now we have the actual crowning part. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the crowns, and if possible, you can make them into a kind of like a globe, like this. And you're going to bless them on the gospel. In the name of the Trinity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, service of the betrothal. So again, there are different customs as to how to do this. It doesn't really matter. The whole point of this is the mutuality between them and therefore I will give you one demonstration of how it can be done. At this point, the chanter will intone the epistle reading taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. So, as he would do that. So in it is and does it the head of us of this Maglotita in her own. Sophia. Prosephesius Epistolis Pablo. subject to one another out of reverence for Christ, and so on and so forth. And then that would end. This is a great mystery, and I take it to mean Christ and the Church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself. Peter. 
to you, the reader. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And next, the priest intones the gospel. You might remember that after the crowning, I actually picked up the gospel that was on the table in front of the couple, and I brought it with me. The reason for this is for the priest has it available so he can read the gospel. So we're going to find the gospel for the wedding service at the end of the uh, liturgical gospel in the place where at the, the very final section of the liturgical gospel that has the, the readings for sacraments. So here it is for weddings. So be or fia cusumento a you evangelio irini pasi. For blessed is your holy name, and glorified is the kingdom of love 
Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. You keep up. And then you pick up the common cup, and the chanter would be singing, I will drink from the cup of salvation, I will call upon the name of the Lord, Kotirion Sotiriu Lipsume, which is also a communion hymn. And this reflects the connection of the marriage service to the divine liturgy. It also witnesses to its original context. Make sure that the can't, make sure that the couple use their hand to sort of control, so there won't be any spillage. In this case, it's easy because it's a clear cup. And then we have the dance of Isaiah. You pick up the gospel and do the dance of Isaiah. And normally the kumbara also would be behind and he would also be included in this dance of Isaiah. He would be holding the ribbon like this. The couple should have had their hands, from the time that you join their hands, their hands are joined till the very end of the service. So, I just want to note that detail. Tas kefalas i 
imon to kirio klinate. It's imon with y is referring to you. It's referring just to the couple. And so it's referring to them bowing their heads and you can do this. May you bow your heads to the Lord, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the all holy, consubstantial, and life creating Trinity, one Godhead and kingdom, bless you and grant you long life, well favored children, progress in life and in faith, replenish you with all the good things of the earth, and count you worthy of the promised blessings through the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and all the saints. Every time I say you in English, that's imas, with an y in Greek, just like the original petition is taskephalas imon, with y, it's referring to them. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos and of all the saints. Then the dismissal. Doxasi of Theos, this one here, doxasi. He who by his presence in Cana of Galilee declared marriage to be honorable, Christ our true God, or in Greek, O Diatis in Cana, Epidemias, Timion, Nadixas, Ton Ramon, and if it's a Sunday, Canastas in Necron, Christos, Valithinos Theos, or in English, He who by his presence in Cana of Galilee declared marriage to be honorable, who was raised from the dead, Christ the true God, if it's a Sunday, and so on and so forth. And then at the very end, in the dance of Isaiah, the third time around, again, the priest should always be holding the gospel. So what, what we should have done is taken the gospel, and once the couple is in their position, you put the gospel on the holy table. Which means the holy gospel is there available for you to use at this very final liturgical action, which is the final prayer. The so you separate their hands with the gospel, and that symbolizes the fact that spiritually their hands are always joined, but obviously physically it's impossible to always have your hands joined. So that which is unifying them always spiritually is the gospel, the word of Christ. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope this was helpful. Amen. One thing I forgot to mention is that obviously a wedding normally would be done outside of Great Lent and therefore the ribbon in the Gospel would not be purple. So the reason it's purple is because I happen to be filming, filming this during Great Lent. As you saw also the curtain uh, was purple. Um, there was a mistake at the very beginning of the video because at the betrothal part of the service the curtain was closed. The curtain will be open from the very beginning of the betrothal part of the service and throughout the crowning also. Thank you.